Hi guys, Luton here, back again to look at what you can be doing in-game to ensure a win for your team. Now to begin with, the first thing I would say is that it's not all about the kills. I know that might seem slightly counter to many people's thinking, but it's not. Providing you can hold your own and maybe even get just as good as a 1 to 1 KD, that's good enough. Uh, what's more important is that you are aware, that you're self-aware and that you're aware of what everyone else is doing in the game. You're going to end up in situations which are not necessarily to your own design, you're going to end up in situations where you just get caught out and there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to get sniped, you're going to get shot in the back, you're going to get grenaded, all of these things are going to happen. But provided you actually focus on working with your squad and communicating and pushing the right elements at the right time, you're going to find yourself overall successful. Now I've edited this video a little bit more than I ordinarily would because there were a lot of times where I was kind of in the middle of the map here and not really engaging on anything in particular. That's because what I was doing essentially in this round was guarding. Uh, I was playing a guarding role of staying between the bases. You can see that I kind of generally throughout this round hold this median line so that I can do things like this. What I'm doing is eliminating these guys who are trying to flank and flankers are your most dangerous enemy. What you've got to think about in game is that most of the other players that you're playing with are interested in focusing on kills and pushing that front line and that's what the rest of my team is doing right now and they're doing a pretty good job of it what will actually be dangerous to you and your team the most dangerous thing are these guys here that we're having to deal with right now these tend to be the more top tier players they tend to be the more intelligent players they tend to be the players who are focused on you know breaking your line and getting in behind they are the more dangerous players generally they'll tend to be lone wolves or another squad of coordinated players who want to kind of get behind and break if you can control those smaller percentage of individuals your team will generally win the game so it's about focusing and identifying the most you know the priority threat to your overall team and so you can see that this is what's happening right here throughout this game these guys were harassing our back line you could see at the beginning of the game we had won a lot of bases now they've pushed back and capped some of these and the only reason they've been able to cap these bases is because of those flankers and the guys who are breaking our line so my squad are over we have like one or two at the front line who are kind of coordinating the reason we got a couple of guys up there and you'll always want to have like maybe one or two guys if you can spare them up at the front so they can inform you about information as to what's happening who's moving where they coming to your direction okay the rest of you guys can play like a guarding securing role which is what we're playing right now again remember though you've got to prioritize and learn about when to do this it's not going to be essential to do this all game because some games will not have those kind of players we identified in the last round as you remember from yesterday's video that we were playing against a very dedicated check this guy with the bow um, we were playing against a very aggressive dedicated team so we decided look at that teleport that we <laughs> that we needed to focus much more on a kind of guarding defensive role in this round and that's what we have done um, so basically by staying back here guarding the middle ground and securing our rear bases that means that they can't get the drop on us they can't get the advantage they can't break our rear line and cut through the middle because that tends to be what happens on this or conquest or anything like that any of those other game modes they will get behind you they will secure a position and look you can see this right here so you can see then what happens is the rest of their team will start to crumble usually the top sort of 10 to 25 percent of a team dictate how well the rest of the team will do so if you are like securing and eliminating and, and preventing that that top tier from controlling a section of the map it means that the rest of their team is probably going to crumble and you'll remember from the last video that we showed on propaganda that's what happened uh, when we joined the game our team was being absolutely annihilated because they had no top tier players who were kind of pushing and breaking the objective line and trying to harass the player you know the enemy team as soon as our guys our squad of four got in there and started to break that line suddenly the game turned around and our team were unable to push forward and actually get back into the game so that's really what you need to keep in mind it's about identifying those high risk those HVT you know the high value targets the HVTs you've got to eliminate those guys the priorities focus on harassing them keeping them down even if you can't always kill them just harassing them and making their life a lot more difficult is good enough okay a uh, little mini tactic for you here look I know there's snipers and stuff behind me so I'm throwing a barrage of smoke to create a wall for myself to travel through because I got to cover open ground uh, it's worth trying that for yourself if you're in game and you need to cross open ground quickly uh, the reason was I need to get back here look because they've broken this line I couldn't spend the time it would take to stop from cover to cover to cover so dropping that smoke wall has enabled me to basically get back on this position very very quickly so now look we've come back here very fast the other thing that you need to keep in mind is speed speed is incredibly important uh, to be getting back and securing these rear bases if me and the guys had not moved fast enough to secure this base the next thing you know the base is secured then the enemies can respawn and so on and so on you know and that's the other thing is like 
you've got to remember that those four or five players, you it's not just them you're going to be dealing with, because once they secure a base, the rest of their team can start spawning there, and suddenly you're having to deal with a lot more players. So moving very quickly so you only have to deal with two or three guys is really, really important. Um, Again, when you have minimal players like this, and here we are, let's see, we're pushing right back into them, clearing out the one, two, three from this base, and we're just dropping them, re-secure, identify next position, move on. It's that kind of speed, and you need to be very quickly communicating to everybody else. How many are there? What's their position? What are they doing? Where are you going to move to next? It's like one, two, three. You've just got to keep on talking where you're going to, what's going to happen, what's the way to do. Right now, Wolf just got dropped. He was telling me the guy's class. He was telling me his position. He was telling me what weapon he had so that I could best counter. I needed to know, do I need to stay long range? Do I need to just rush straight up to him? How are we going to deal with it? Not to mention the fact we were like, these guys are here. They keep spawning here. They've got to have a recon beacon. You know, you've got to know these things and adapt to it. And in doing so, that will enable you to secure the game and secure it for the rest of your team. So I think this has illustrated basically the point that I was making from the last video to this one. It's not about focusing on kills all the time. Kills are important in Battlefield, they're important in any FPS because that's the whole centric of the game. But it's not the overall most important thing when you're looking at securing the map for the team. Now, again, you've got to remember this is very, very specific on certain situations and certain things. You know, like, look, I come in here, see a guy, oh, there's a guy to my left. You know, this is what's going to happen. You're going to die sometimes. But the point is, is that you know, again, not all games are the same. Sometimes you'll have no chance, you know. You always need a little bit of luck, you need a little bit of chance, you need to have a little bit of, you know, just opportunity there. Sometimes you're not going to get that. Sometimes your team is weak and they'll just break through. And no matter what you do, you can't break through that line. Maybe they have like three LMGs set up on a choke point and you just can't break it. There's some situations you can't counter, there's some situations you can't do. But if you at least try to implement these things, if you at least try to push, if you identify what your team is doing, what's the enemy team doing, how many of these top tier guys have they got? on the other team how well are they pushing where are they going what are they doing are they using recon beacons once you identify all of this information you'll be able to build a stronger uh, you know tactical situation for yourself and your squad and in doing so you hopefully will have a more successful game you'll probably hopefully have a win as well so drop down in the comments below guys your thoughts about tactical team play what you do to best help your team secure the round overall and uh, i'll see you next time for some more battlefield 4